Welcome back. Back in April, Senator Bernie Sanders, who of course was Biden's chief rival in the 2020 Democratic primaries, ruled out a third presidential bid and endorsed Biden for re-election. But on Saturday, Sanders was back in New Hampshire, one of those early presidential states where he won both the 2016 and 2020 primaries to share what he called his concrete agenda for the future of the Democratic Party at the New Hampshire Institute of Politics. Of course, when you go to New Hampshire, it sparks some speculation about his own political future. It is no secret that I want Joe Biden to be reelected president. If that is going to happen, if we are going to defeat creeping authoritarianism and right-wing extremism, there has got to be an ideological change, of course. The independent senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders, joins me now. Senator Sanders, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you for having me. So the fact that you felt the need to do this, should we read into the fact that you don't believe there's a second term agenda yet that uh, Americans can wrap their head around for what a second Biden term would look like? No. I think what you can read into that is that Biden has every right to be proud of a long series of accomplishments. You know, two and a half, three years ago, this country was in the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. Because of COVID, today, unemployment is all of 3%. We're gaining new jobs, rebuilding manufacturing. We've invested in the uh, infrastructure. infrastructure. Uh, we're making progress, and Biden has a right to be proud of that. The point of my remarks is that you cannot simply, as President of the United States, rest on your laurels. What you have got to understand is that today, for structural reasons that have gone on for decades, Tens and tens of millions of people are struggling to put food on the table. They can't afford health care. They can't afford prescription drugs. They can't afford housing. Yeah. They can't afford child care. And meanwhile, in the midst of all of that, you have incredible corporate greed, and the billionaire class has never done better. So my message yesterday for the Democrats, not just for the president, yeah. is if you want to do well in this election, talk to the needs of the American people, have the guts to take on the big money and trust who have so much power. It sounds like you don't think the phrase finish the job is something to rally around, that there needs to be more than that. Well, it's yes, you need to recognize that not only have we accomplished a great deal in Biden's first three years, and he deserves credit for that. But there are so many long-term problems that this country is facing. Does anybody in America think that our health care system is working? Yeah. And yet the insurance companies make tens of billions of dollars. Drug companies make tens of billions of dollars. We don't have enough doctors, nurses, mental health providers, pharmacists, dentists. So we need fundamental reform in health care. And by the way, the existential issue of our time is whether or not we address yeah. climate change. And we have made some steps forward, but there is no question in my mind if we're going to provide, a pl allow our kids and grandchildren yeah. to live in a healthy planet, we've got a lot, lot more to do. Do you think there would be a robust discussion on this on the left if there were a competitive primary? Do you think there should be? Well, what I have, I think in this particular time, this particular moment in American history, when we're taking on uh, somebody, the former president, who, in fact, does not believe in democracy. He is an authoritarian uh, and a very, very dangerous person. I think at this moment, there has got to be a unification mm -hmm. of progressive people in general all over this country, people who are prepared to make sure that women control their own body, that we deal with climate change, that we represent the needs of the working class of this country and take on the billionaire class. Uh, one way that you make it clear that age isn't a factor with you is you're pretty energetic. We see you travel the country. You show up on, you do interviews. Um, what do you, it is clearly an issue for many voters when it comes to President Biden. He's a year younger than you. You have advice to him on how he should uh, assuage those uh, concerns in the public about his age? Look, when people look at a candidate, whether it's Joe Biden or Trump or Bernie Sanders, anybody else, you know, they have to evaluate a whole lot of factors. Uh, I, you know, met with the president, I don't know, five or six weeks ago. We had a great discussion. He seemed fine to me. But I think at the end of the day, what we have got to ask ourselves is what do people stand for? Do you believe the women have a right to control their own bodies? Well, the president has been strong on that. 
Do you think that climate change is real? Or do you agree with the Republicans that it's a non-issue? Do you think we should raise the minimum wage? Do you think we should reform and t take on the pharmaceutical industry? So age is an issue, Chuck, but there are a lot of broader issues than just that. Um, let me ask you about Cornell West. He was a co-chair of your campaign in 2020. He's flirting <laughs> with a Green Party bid for president. Um, the numbers tell the story between 2016 and 2020. Um, you can directly correlate the two third party major candidates, third party candidates, their collective total. Um, that was the difference between Biden winning states and Clinton losing those key states. Uh, are you trying to discourage Cornell West from running? Well, I've known Cornell for many, many years. He's a very independent mind guy. He will do what he wants to do. Uh, I just think, again, uh, I think Cornell or anybody else can play an important role now about raising uh, issues that are not always discussed. But at the end of the day, I think the progressive community in general and the American people yeah. have got to make a decision as to whether we stand for democracy or authoritarianism or whether or not we're going to yeah. represent working class families. One, and, one of your yeah, chief political I advisors am, yeah, is concerned that Cornell West is being taken advantage of by maybe people that simply want his name on the ballot. Do you have those concerns? I, I really haven't followed it that closely. All right. Bernie Sanders, uh, the independent senator from Vermont, who we saw in New Hampshire yesterday. Thanks for coming on and sharing your views with us. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.